Got my tea. I'm ready to spill some tea about me. So here we go. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It has been a little bit of time since I've filmed something, but I'm back, I'm here, and I'm here with my 1,000 subscriber celebration video with a Q&A for you guys. So I figured i make myself a cup of tea because I actually quit coffee three weeks ago, which is a fun fact about me. Uh, I was highly addicted to coffee and I was wondering why I was having major, major anxiety problems and it was coffee. So I switched over to tea and tea has a lower amount of caffeine. So yes, I'm still drinking caffeine, but it's not affecting my mood whatsoever. So it's great, I feel more energized, believe it or not. Uh, you don't get that crash and all that stuff you get from coffee. So highly suggested if you're a coffee drinker, give it up, drink tea. Let me take a sip. <laughs> so I just wanted to say how thankful I am for every single one of you guys for subscribing to my channel. When I first started this channel, I did not think anybody would watch my videos. I was really just doing it as a like log for myself and just a way to connect with people uh, in a different way on the internet. And I have and I've met some amazing people by doing booktube, which I love you all. You know who you are. And it's just been amazing being on booktube so i just want to thank you so much for subscribing and commenting on my videos and sharing my videos and just interacting with me on a daily basis i see you i love you and thank you so much so some of you guys sent me in some questions whether it was through dms comments on my videos uh twitter whatever the case was uh some questions that you wanted to know about me nothing too personal but personal enough and i'd like to get to them so i'm not going to read anyone's names because i feel it's better to keep it all a little private but you'll know which question is yours when it comes up so the first question is how old are you and I am 31 years old. I'm a little bit on the older side of booktube. I started this channel when I was 30, which was a year ago, and now I am 31, approaching 32. Not happy about it, but on the lighter side of things, I feel that because of my age, it helps me to read a little bit more diversely for you guys. So I fit into a different category of people that search the internet uh, that are looking for book recommendations and a lot of you have commented saying oh thank you so much you know I am a little older too and all these book recommendations are always YA books and I'm glad that you read so many different diverse books so I want to say I'm here for you I see you and yes I do I read very diversely along genres because I like to keep it interesting I like to read a little bit of everything if you were to write a book what kind of book would you write I would probably write a magical realism story because that is the genre that I love. I used to write a lot when I was a kid. I really wanted to be a writer. I always wanted to be a writer. I have stacks of notebooks of books that I wrote. And my sister even remembers it. She's like, it's so funny how you're doing booktube because you used to write so much when you were a kid and all the books that you wrote. So she remembers that because I used to make her listen to me when I would read them to her. And they were not good. They really were not good. Uh, there is this one that was pretty good. I let Justin read it and Justin was like on like the 40th page and he's like, and I stopped writing. I literally just stopped writing the story. And he's like, but what happens to the mom? And I was like, oh my God, I guess I have to finish that book. But um, I might write a book in the future, but as of right now, my life is so hectic. I just don't have time to like zone in and like focus on writing right now. But maybe in the future, I'll write something finally. Next question is, how long have you been dating Justin? And Justin and I have been together for two and a half years now. And it, feel, it feels like a lifetime now, but um, he is just the most amazing, amazing man. Uh, I came from a very dark place in relationships. I had a very, very bad relationship in the past, and it was a very hard thing for me to trust somebody again. But 
here he comes, Mr. Prince Charming, and he is amazing. He really is just my number one fan, and I am his, and I just love him so much. Who is your favorite author? Uh, my favorite author would have to be Leigh Bardugo, just because me and her are very similar in a lot of ways, and I just love her books. Her books really got me into the YA genre uh, and booktube. I picked up her book in the bookstore because it looked attractive to me. I like the, the synopsis in the back, and I typed it into YouTube to see if there were reviews about it for Shadow and Bone, the Grisha Trilogy, and there were, and that's kind of how I found Booktube and Leigh Bardugo, so yes, I love her. There are so many favorite authors out there, like Stephen King, I have almost every single one of his books, B.E. Schwab, I absolutely love her writing as well. There's just something about me and Leigh Bardugo, we, I just click with her writing so much and I just love her as a person. So I'd have to say she's my favorite. Even though I don't like to play favorites, but she she's definitely my favorite. Who is your favorite booktuber? That's a hard question because I love everybody equally. I Like I said, I don't like playing favorites. But someone's videos that when I see it, I just have to click on it, and that's Books and Lala. I just love her videos, I love her content, I love her attitude. She is literally the rising star of Booktube, and she has changed the game for many of us. So I absolutely adore her, and I adore her videos, and I just love how real she is. She really is just an amazing human being, even though I don't know her personally, but I'd love to collab with her one day because she is really awesome, and I admire her. And I don't know how she balances being a wife, having a kid, and a huge booktube following. I just don't know how she does it, but she does. What do you like and dislike about booktube? <laughs> well, there's a lot of things. There are a lot of things that I like and there are a lot of things that I dislike. I'm gonna start with my likes before we get into negative things, but my likes are definitely the community. It's a fun place where we all can connect and talk about books because a lot of us introverted people, we don't really have many friends that read and it's nice that we have this platform where we could you know reach out to a stranger basically and just have an amazing conversation about a favorite book that you read and I just love that about this community. I also love everyone's diversity. I love everyone just being themselves and when booktube first came out when you look back on videos it was very structured and it was all pretty much the same type of thing and now everyone is just taking their channels and flipping it and making it their own they're putting out original content they're saying who they are even if they don't say it to their families they're saying it to us on the internet uh, people are just not hiding in the closet anymore and it's great that people are feeling comfortable to be here in this community and they are accepted here and that is what is so amazing about booktube and I can go on. I can literally go on. Some of the things that I dislike are the cancel culture that is going on on booktube. I need a sip. The cancel con culture on booktube has been really really bad and I feel terrible for people that this is happening to because sometimes you say things that might be insensitive to some other people but to you you don't realize that something is wrong with that especially if you are not raised a certain way or whatever the case is if you're completely blind to something that's not your fault and the cancel culture really is taking a toll on the community and I think we just need to get rid of that. I think it needs to be done and we need to just, if you don't like something someone says, don't watch their video or if you don't like something somebody says, just don't pay it no mind. Don't feed into the negativity. Don't create that energy because you are creating something way bigger than what the actual problem was. So definitely the cancel culture is really, really bad and I just don't I just don't partake in it and Twitter is really bad for that so I try to stay far away from Twitter I do have a Twitter and I post on there periodically but 
uh, emotionally, I just don't like some things that people say, so I'm not going to feed into it, and I'm not going to, you know, follow that, and I'm not going to open it up on my phone every day because it's not healthy. The next question is, are you still going to school for, for a job in the medical field? I am not. I quit school. I had a really bad hiccup in the beginning of the year. Um, a little bit of tea before I finish this uh, little tea spill here. I had a little bit of a hiccup. I had a little bit of what I would call a quarter of the life crisis. I was freaking out about work. I was freaking out that I wasn't making enough money. I was freaking out that I didn't fit in with my salon. I was freaking out that I didn't fit in with my friends at the salon. I was freaking out that I was vibrating at a different capacity than the people that I was around. And it was kind of bugging me out that I was at a standstill position at my job. So I took the rash decision and I decided to go to school for something that I don't have any mind to do uh, for medical billing and coding. It sounded really exciting at first, but then when you start taking the classes and you start going to school and you start thinking about getting a real job in the world, it's terrifying, especially when you've been somewhere for 14 years. So no, I am not going to school anymore. I wasted two grand on school that I am not finishing and I will not force myself ever to finish something that I'm not enjoying. I do regret not finishing school but my mindset is not there. It's not something that I want to proceed with in life. Uh, I did quit my job for a week. I went and worked somewhere else, hated it, called my job, said please take me back and that's where I've been. Uh, I've been doing hair and I'll continue to do hair until maybe I am self-employed in some type of way with my creative work that I do on the side, which I'll get to later on. I would just recommend anyone who goes through something like that, like I did, just think about your decisions before you make them. It always sounds like an amazing idea, but the grass is never greener on the other side and always 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 never take what you have for granted and that's it. next question is favorite music artist or band i have a lot of those i'm gonna start with one that has been with me since my entire life and that is fleetwood mac is my favorite band second stevie Nicks is my favorite musician singer songwriter but that is something that I grew up with. But I would have to say that now my favorite music is country music. A lot of people don't know that about me and especially some of my friends don't because I grew up a punk rocker. I was a hardcore rock and roll in the mosh pits at concerts. That's who I was growing up. But now in my adulthood, I want to say in my late 20s, I fell in love with country music and that is what I listen to on a daily basis now. So I love Thomas Rhett and I love Russell Dickerson. Those two guys are my loves. Love Luke Bryan. The list can go on forever, but yes, I am a huge, huge country fan. So if you two are a country fan, let me know. Let me know what shows you've been to this summer because everyone's been on tour this summer. Uh, I did go see Thomas Rhett, Russell Dickerson, and Dustin Lynch at PNC, which is by my house. And, um, me and my boyfriend went because Thomas Rhett, his music kind of connected me and Justin together. So it was really, really sweet for us to go. But I would have to say there's a bunch that I love, but I listen to Fleetwood Mac all the time. I listen to Stevie all the time. She is my spirit animal to the T, and I just love her so much. And Thomas Rhett and Russell Dickerson, mm, God, I love them. Love them. That's a fun fact about me. I feel like no one on booktube really talks about country music, uh, but yeah, I love country. <laughs> if you had to switch lives with a character from any book, what would it be? That is like one of the hardest questions I think anyone has ever asked me, and I would have to say, and now this is probably so cookie cutter from everyone from booktube, but I would love to be 
Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter because number one, she turns into a cat. And number two, she is a badass witch. And I too am a badass witch. She's just great. So I would love to be Professor McGonagall even though she's stressed out all the time trying to take care of kids in the school. But I just think she is the coolest witch and I would love to be her. What was the best book you read so far this year and what is the worst book that you read so far this year? I don't really know. There, I've read so many bad, not bad books, but books that I just didn't love. So, so much mediocre stuff has been read by me. And this month in August, I have been slumping so hard because I felt like everything that I was picking up was just like, eh. So, I would have to say The Turn of the Key was probably the best book that I read this year by Ruth Ware. And that's like... I think because it caught me by such surprise and I read it in one sitting, it was the first book that I read this year that I finished in one sitting, that it's definitely my my favorite of the year so far. I know that's going to change because in the fall a lot of my uh, anticipated releases are coming out and two of them might be in the running for my top book of the year, but we'll see. Um, and the worst book that I read this year... I don't know. There was a lot. There was a lot. Um, let me look on my Goodreads list. I probably should have thought, like, thought of this question before I uh, started this video, but I didn't. I guess I would have to say A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. I read that back in April, I think. It was really freaking boring and it wasn't anything that I thought it was going to be. So I guess that was like my most let down book. I don't want to say it's the worst book, but I think I gave it a two star. So that's pretty bad of a rating for me. Next question is, I love how you read so many genres of books. Do you have a favorite? Yes, like I said before, magical realism is my favorite genre. I just love reading things that have magic and real life issues and they just combine them and it's just magical. This year I read a book called The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins. Definitely low on the radar, but I loved how they incorporated the magic and the contemporary setting. It was so amazing. So if you have not read that yet, check it out. It is such a light read. It's perfect for the summer. So if you are looking for a book that is on the lighter side, pick it up. It's kind of witchy. It's really cool. It's about a group of sisters that have a little inkling and one sister, she can talk to books. The books talk to her. It's great. So definitely check it out. I believe it came out maybe the beginning of August, August 6th or something like that. So it's in paperback and it should be in your bookstore by now. So check them out. Any tattoos do you have? I have 13 tattoos um, and I don't count these as different ones. This is one tattoo. This was one session. Um, this is one of the tattoos. I don't want to say that I regret, but I would have done a little differently. So I'm going to work on finishing this up and shading and all that stuff. When I get around to it, my boyfriend doesn't have tattoos, so it's like hard to, to get to the tattoo place. He's like wary about them, even though like I'm covered in tattoos. I have a lot of earthy tattoos. A lot of my tattoos are symbols that I use um, and they are symbols that represent me so that's why I have them. But yes, I have 13 tattoos and if you guys want to see some of them in another video, let me know. Uh, but there are some that I'm not going to show you because they're in spots that I'm not putting on the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's that. Next question is, how do you get arcs? <sighs> it's kind of luck of the draw. It's like a lottery. Uh, a lot of my arcs this year I got from BookCon. Uh, a lot of my arcs come from different publishers. I've been friendly with the marketing team with of Tor before I even got BookTube. So they'll send me books here and there, but they don't send me every book that's an arc. Um, so it's kind of a luck of the draw. I just see a book that I want to read and I type it in. I see who is the publisher for that book and I email them and I just, 
you know, say, hey, listen, I have a channel, I link my channel, I link my subscriber count, I link my views, and I tell them, you know, I'm interested in an arc of this book, if you're willing it to send it to me, here's my address. Kind of keep everything really cut and dry short and sweet as well because you don't want to overwhelm them with too much letters because they'll just look past it so yeah and i just send it once that's it if i don't get it i don't get it but at least i tried and most of the time they send it the next question i have here is top three stephen king books okay here we go number one bag of bones number two salem's lot and number three the shining Next question is, what are your three favorite series and your three favorite standalones? Okay, Grisha Trilogy, the Darker Shade of Magic Trilogy, and I would have to say the Raven Cycle. Even though I'm not finished with the series yet, I'm in the middle of Blue Lily Blue, I just know this is going to be a favorite series of mine. So, those three, and then my favorite standalones, I would have to say... Devouring Grey, The Wicked Deep, Bag of Bones. You've mentioned witchcraft in your previous videos. Are you a witch? Uh, yeah, I am. I practice what I call witchcraft. I work with herbs. I work with moon, the moon cycle. I do rituals. I make spell charms and spell bags and, you know, do all that fun witchy stuff. Uh, I don't do it here on booktube, but if you guys would love to see how I do certain things or what I keep in my craft, I'll never show you guys my altar though, that's private. Um, but I am not Wiccan, I just practice a form of witchcraft. I am a Christian witch. I work a lot with the environment and I work with the earth basically. Uh, I am a Capricorn, I am an earth sign, and I just always, always felt so connected to the earth and so connected to the moon so I work with both elements and yeah so I do do rituals on the Sabbath because it is celebrating change of season and all of the things that those seasons can bring to you spiritually. Uh, I started my spiritual path uh, nine years ago, became a Reiki master about five years ago and I made my first spell book when I was seven. So, yeah, I am what you would call a solitary witch. I don't practice in a coven, so I just kind of do it all myself. And I've been doing it for so, so long that it's become part of my life. So if you guys have any questions about that or would like to see some videos about that, please let me know down below. I can definitely take this channel in another direction uh, for that if you guys would like. I know it's a very taboo subject for some people. There's a lot of misleading people out there and a lot of false information out there. I still consider myself a baby witch because I am still learning, I am still reading and researching my craft and I don't think I'll ever be like this most professional know-it-all witch. Like you never know it all. You're constantly, constantly learning. So that's basically what I do. So I guess I'm out of the broom closet now and you guys all know. If you guys want any information about that, like I said, leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to try to help you out with that. I do do tarot readings for friends and friends of friends. So if you guys are interested in something like that as well, uh, I'm thinking about creating a little bit of a side business, incorporating that uh, with my charm bags and oils and moon water and all of the stuff that I use in my practice and I want to share it with the world. So eventually I'll get there. It's just I haven't found the right time yet. But when that happens, you guys will all know about it. And lastly, the last question is, what kind of dog is Sadie? She is the cutest one. She is part pit and part something else. I would really like to do a DNA thing on her uh, because she does look like a pit, but she, her muscle structure isn't so much like her, the way she stands and the length of her legs and stuff like that. So I would be curious to see what else she is and her personality, gosh, she is like the laziest bean. She is so funny and I just, I love her so much. She's sleeping right here right now. I'm gonna pick her up so you guys can see her. Here she is. Look at the cameras. 
Baby, big baby. <laughs> she was just sleeping. She's mad at me. Go ahead. Oh, oh, okay. Here go. Okay, you okay? So, yeah, <laughs> she just moved my camera. Um, yeah, I don't know really what she is, but her face is definitely pit. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, that is it. That is all I have for you guys today. And let me know down below what videos you want to see from me in the future. Because I love doing this for you guys. And on that note, I'll be talking to all of you guys soon. Thank you so much for subscribing. I love you all.